This episode of Ham Talk Live is brought to you by Tower Electronics. For connectors, cables, and more, call 920-435-2973 or visit pl-259.com. And by ICOM. Heard it? Worked it? Logged it. Visit www.icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information about ICOM radios. It's Ham Radio. Everybody, I'm back. It's uh, Ham Talk Live episode number 312. Toroids and Balans, recorded on Sunday, January 29th, 2023. I'm your host, Neil Rapp, WB9VPG. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Ham Talk Live. Today, we're joined by John Portoon, W6NBC. And uh, last episode, Michael Colley, W4ORL, and Mike Bannigan, KJ4UDO, were here to talk about the Orlando Hamcation. And that's just a couple of weeks off. And uh, the award winners from the Hamcation committee. Uh, so if you missed that show, you can listen anytime over at hamtalklive.com or on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Well, I do have uh, several quick announcements here before we get get to talking to uh john about uh what do you need to know about toroids and balance and what, what what can you do with them and what how do you make them work right well uh we'll get to that here in a little bit but here are a, a few things that uh that you can uh do in the meantime uh first of all the am rally is returning to the hf and six meter bands for the sixth year that is starting on friday february 3rd and um, it's just to encourage the use of AM on 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, 10, and 6 meters. Uh, just to highlight some various types of AM equipment that's in use today. It's open to any and all radio amateurs just running full carrier amplitude modulation, standard AM, any kind of radio equipment, new, old, whatever. Um, this year's event is from 0 hundred Zulu Saturday, February 4th. Uh, which is Friday night, um, uh, uh, 7 p.m. Eastern, if you're in the Eastern time zone. Um, so 0 hundred Zulu Saturday to 0 700 Zulu on Monday, February 6th. So, um, that's, um, 2 a.m. Eastern on, on Monday. Um, so that way we, we have it a little later for the, uh, the West Coast people. So again, 0 hundred Saturday to, Zero seven hundred on Monday, February sixth. More information available at AM Rally A R um, A M R A L L Y dot com. Uh, so make sure you check that out. Also, Carol Perry, uh, our friend WB two MGP, is accepting nominations for the Young Ham Lens a Hand contest until April first. And that winner will receive a hundred dollar stipend and will be announced at the youth forum at the Dayton Hamvention. Um, this is what she needs. She needs name, call sign, age, address, telephone number, and why this nominee is deserving of the award. So just, you know, a paragraph or two about what this uh, young ham has been doing to lend a hand. And that may be. You know, involve ham radio may not, but, uh, they're ham and they're helping out. So, um, you can email that information, name, call sign, age, address, cell number, home number, if there's one, and, and why they're deserving of the award to WB2MGP. That's whiskey bravo two, Mike Golf Papa at gmail.com by April 1st. And, uh, they'll announce those. Again, at the Youth Forum at Hamvention. And then the last thing, um, there's a special event that's looking to grow. Um, 
and we may uh, talk about it here on the show later on when it gets closer to time, but uh, the Elmer special event is looking for some operators. This is the Whiskey One Echo uh, special event, and uh, it honors Elmers who have helped us along uh, the way here in Ham Radio, and the organizers know there's a lot more stories out there about Elmers and lots of thank yous to share for Elmers. So, uh, it's going to start on September 29th. But if you, uh, are thinking about, you know, the why and how you, where you are now in amateur radio, now's the time, uh, to let Rich know. Uh, and maybe you can be, uh, one of the operators for this special event. So, uh, you can contact him at Marzo7088. That's M A R Z O 7088. Marzo7088 at yahoo.com. So, um, we'll, we'll hear more about that later. And that's, uh, also featured on Amateur Radio Newsline this week. So, uh, make sure you check that out. All right. Well, enough of the announcements. I'll, uh, be back with John. We'll talk toroids right after this word from Tower Electronics right here on Ham Talk Live. His two cents is worth $37 in change. He once ran a marathon because it was on his way to Dayton. He works FT8 by ear. He once worked North Korea on every band in one minute using only a microwatt. He slowed down his code speed to work a de-expedition to 200 words a minute. He is, indeed, the most interesting ham in the world. I don't always put on my own PL259s, but when I do, I prefer them from Tower Electronics. Stay resident, my friends. Tower Electronics has all the adapters, cables, connectors, and yes, PL259s you need at a ham fest near you or visit pl-259.com. And coming up on the Tower Electronics Ham Fest schedule, they will be at or the Orlando Hamcation, February 10th, 11th, and 12th. Then uh, February 25th, they'll be in Dalton, Georgia. March 4th, Cave City, Kentucky. March 19th, Maumee, Ohio. And March 25th in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. But you can visit them from anywhere at pl-259.com. Who is the most dangerous person in the world? A ham with some wire, a potato gun, and an idea. Ham Talk Live. Welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Today, John Portoon, W6NBC, joins us on the Orlando Amateur Radio Club and Hamcation Zoom line. John's been a ham since 1965, and he's active on everything, 160 meters to 2.5 gigahertz, and helps people get on the air and, and uh, new licensees. He manages a remote base. Um, he does a lot of, uh, two meter and 40 meters from his, uh, RV and he's married to KF6OEB and has, uh, three children, 12 grandchildren, retired in 2002. Spent most of his career working at KNBC in Los Angeles, uh, as well as Ampex and Sony. And, uh, he's a frequent contributor to QST Magazine, and we're uh, today we're talking about some uh, toroids. So, John, welcome back to the show. Thanks for being here. Oh, it's my pleasure, Neil. Always uh, welcome. Uh, always glad to uh, chat about ham radio. Oh, yeah. So it's something we can't get out of our blood. Nope. <laughs> it stays there. Not and, uh, 
appreciate all your your uh, talks here today and and we're going to we're going to do a new one here uh for us uh about uh toroids but but before I get to that I, I do want to mention that uh John has um club presentations available he's got a whole list of things to talk about powerpoint presentations and all kinds of things and, and you have a new email address so if people are trying to get a hold of you to uh, do one of these club presentations tell everybody how they get a hold of you yes indeed well first of all you go to my website w6nbc.com and it will tell you all about how to sign up for a free uh, zoom presentation to be made in your radio club or your or or if you're putting on an expo someplace a ham expo and you'd like to have a presentation on a ham topic and as neil says i do have quite a number of topics that which uh, uh, are being presented around the country and in fact around the world uh, almost any of the english-speaking part of the world i South Africa, New Zealand, Australia, UK. I've been making presentations there by Zoom, and uh, they've been pretty well received. So, uh, if you'd like to make a presentation, just just get on the website, and it'll tell you how. And you send me an email, and we'll sign you up and give your club a presentation by Zoom. It's a uh, great fun. That sure is, and make sure you you check the website for that new email address because if you use the old one, uh, you may not may not get too far well we're going to talk about some some ferrites the toroids all that fun stuff today so uh first let's let's start off talking about what's a toroid what does it do well a toroid uh, is just a ring inductor uh just a magnetic ring that's uh, used to make uh make uh, inductors but uh its principal use in ham radio, yeah, is to make balance. Uh, we know we know about balance by name, and of course, uh, we use them typically. But not too many hams are really aware of how to how to make a balance from a toroid, how to pick out a toroid, and then how to wind wire onto it uh, to make a balance, and. Uh, and uh, that's uh, that's the, the pretty much the topic that I, it's one of the common topics that I that I talk about and I'm frequently uh, lecturing on. Now, if you're going to go get a toroid for a certain application, uh, how do you, how do you pick that? What kind of mix do you have? What kind of size? What? How do you pick without the right one for the job? Okay, there are two th- two things you need to keep in mind when picking out a toroid the the uh, the mix and and the size of the toroid and the mix the mix determines the frequency that you're going to operate uh, the ballon on uh, and that really there are only three choices of mix in picking out a toroid and and they are mix 31 mix 40 uh, 43 these are the HF mixes. Now you might you might find a lot of variation looking in the looking in the books and so forth. But if you're picking out a toroid, mix 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 thirty one and mix forty mix forty three are the ones you want to pick. They're the HF toroid. Now a lot of hams swear by the thirty one mix, but it's no better than forty uh, no better than for the forty three mix. Even though a lot of hams think it is, it just it just uh, doesn't quite as need as many turns. That's the only reason. And the mix sixty one mix is the VHF. T- so you've only got three choices: thirty one, forty three, sixty one. Thirty one and forty three are for HF. Sixty one is for VHF. So that's that's picking it for the frequency. For the power, you only you really only have two choices. You only have two sizes that you need to, you need to be concerned about the. The 240 and the 140, that which means 2.4 inches, 1.4 inches in diameter. The 240 will handle pretty much a kilowatt, and the 140 is pretty much good for 100 watts. That's pretty much all you need to do. So in picking out a toroid, you pick out an FT, that's ferrite toroid, uh, 240 or 140 for, for the, for the, uh, for the power, and then hyphen for either 
either 31, 43, or 61 for the frequency. So again, if you're picking out a 100-watt toroid for HF, FT240-43 would be a 2.4-inch diameter toroid mix 43, which means it would be a 1-kilowatt ferrite for uh, HF. That's the way. You, that's the way you pick them out. It's pretty simple. It, you don't have to. You don't have to get it. Make it really. Com- you don't have to go to a lot of radio books. Look up a lot of charts and a lot of graphs. Although you'll find them in the radio books, they're more confusing than they are a help. You really only have those three choices: uh, thirty-one, forty-three, or sixty-one, and, you, and that's pretty much all you need for ham radio. And then size two forty or size one forty for one kilowatt or 100 watts. And that's the only size toroids you really basically need to ever pick out. And, and this mix that we're talking about is, is the mix of different uh, substances that are put into making this thing. So it's got iron in it, and, and there's a certain percentage of, of, of and iron and, and uh, these that's other materials. And so that changes the number of turns that you have to make to get it to work like you want it. That's right. The mix, uh, ferrites are uh, ferro-ceramics or magnetic ceramics. It's a ceramic, just like your teacup, just like a, just like your, a china vase. It's just clay baked in a kiln or fired in a kiln. So it's a ceramic, but it's got, it's got magnetic particles added into the, the clay when it's fired. So it's a ferro-ceramic. And depending upon how much of that 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 ferro material is put into the ceramic, it turns out how magnetic or or what its permeability. That's the technical term. But you don't need to bury yourself in technical terms in in making balance. Uh, it's uh, and you don't need to worry about what kind of the material it is, even though they'll go into great discussions in the technical books and confuse you. You really only need to pick ferrite. You don't need to work, worry about iron powder or any of that kind of stuff. Forget all of that stuff. You, for ham radio, ferrite is what you want to pick. Don't worry about iron powder. So ferrite. And only of those three mixes, they're the only ones you'll ever really be concerned about. 31, 43, or 61. And 43 or 31, you can use them interchangeably. The 31 is not any better than 43 for making a ballon, even though some people swear by 31. And no, don't, you don't need to do that. 43 works just as well. And it's cheaper and more readily available, by the way. So, and a lot of surplus 43 material out there. Or 31 material, yes, is available, but it's not available surplus. I buy, I usually buy surplus 43 ferrites. And, uh, and by the way, you can buy them from Ferrite. They're the main company that makes ferrite tor- toroids in the United States. And I thought, oh, you know, couldn't buy them from them. You probably got to buy 10,000 of these things from Ferrite. No, you don't. <laughs> yeah. They've got a nice retail sales department. They'll sell them to you just as well as Ham Radio Outlet will sell them to you or anybody else. So you can just get on the Internet and buy them from Ferrite quite easily. Yep, and DX Engineering even has the color coded one, so you, you see, you, yeah. you can just look at the color and see which one it is. Yeah. Well, there's all all these uh, all these toroids uh, available, and and you know, so this hopefully simplifies your your selection process and and uh, how you're uh, going to use these. So so let's dive in a little bit here. Uh, we're going to take a break here in just a few minutes, but uh, let's dive in a little bit to, okay, what do I, what do I use these things for? What, what, do I, what do I need these for? Well, you need them to make a ballon. And I'll only deal with this briefly to, to one, kind of, one kind of big issue that I have, and that is I don't like the name ballon. Because you ask the average ham, what's the main purpose of a ballon? Just, just that simple question. What is the main purpose of a ballot? If you ask that in a radio club, nine out of ten times, you're going to get the simple, simple answer, which is not really an answer as far as I'm concerned. And the answer that you commonly get is, what's a ballot for? Well, it's to make balanced into unbalanced. But what does that mean? It really doesn't mean that much to most people. I like the term because it describes what a ballot does. 
it chokes off the shield current on the outside. That's I like to call these things outside shield current chokes. That's what they really are. Because here's the issue. A coax, a piece of coax, you might think it's a it's it's a two conductor transmission line. No, it's not. It's a three conductor transmission line. So where's the third conductor? The third conductor is the outside of the uh, of the shield. Because of skin effect, the the shield breaks up into two separate conductors, the inside of the shield and the outside of the shield. Skin effect separates the shield into two separate conductors very, very distinctly. And current can flow on the outside in the opposite direction, separately, independently from current flowing on the inside of coax. And, and, and that makes the, that makes the shield into two separate conductors. It's, it's, uh, so coax is a three conductor transmission line. But right at the end of coax, right, right where coax ends, uh, is uh, the skin effect also connects the two of them to each other. So when you hook a dipole or an antenna to the end of a piece of coax, the currents coming back from the antenna can can go back to the transmitter, which it wants. It has to go back to the transmitter to complete the circuit from the transmitter. But it can also get on the outside of the shield. We know this. We, we we've heard about shield current. We don't want this. Why? Why don't we want shield current? Because it it can disrupt the whole antenna system. It can because we don't know where that outside shield current's going to go. It can go back to ground. It can go all sorts of nasty places. It can radiate. It can do nasty things. We don't want any current on the outside of the shield. And that's what the ballon is for. We want the ballon to get rid of the outside shield current. We want it to choke the current off of the outside of the shield. That's what a ballon is for. So if anybody asks you, what is a ballon for? Don't answer to to convert balance to unbalance. Answer to get rid of the outside shield current. And, uh, and so that's what, that's what we do. That's what we use a, a toroid for. We wind enough windings on the, on the, on the toroid to prevent, to choke off that outside shield current. The inductance of that coil chokes off the shield current. It it can't get through, but the it can get through on it can get through on the inside. So, um, uh, I, I, it's 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 difficult to explain this in words uh, alone. But uh, that's essentially what a what a what a ballon does. It prevents the prevents the current from getting onto the outside of the shield. It's an outside shield choke. And that's what it's for. But let's uh, let's move on now. Uh, next, maybe after your break here, let's and let's uh, move on to uh, how you how you determine how many windings to put on this toroid. So and if you want to take exactly a break, where I was, on. yeah, we're going to take a break. That's exactly where we where I was headed was. Okay, now let's uh, let's figure out how many turns we need and what kind of antenna we're going to make. But we'll uh, do that after the break here. So I will be back with John right after this word from ICOM America right here on Ham Talk Live. Happy New Year from ICOM. Didn't get everything on your wish list? Spice up your ham shack with one of ICOM's popular handhelds, mobiles, or base stations. These radios are perfect for working your favorite bands while staying inside or venturing out this winter. The IC705 is the perfect sidekick and QRP companion. Base station features and functionality at the tip of your fingers and a portable package covering HF 6 meters, 2 meters, and 70 centimeters. It weighs just over 2 pounds and has RF direct sampling for most of the HF band and IF sampling for frequencies above 25 megahertz. It has the 4.3 inch color touch screen with live band scope and waterfall, 5 watts with a battery, 10 watts with a power supply. It does CW sideband AM 
AM, FM, and full D-Star functions as a micro USB connector, Bluetooth, wireless, land, and integrated GPS. And the perfect accessory for your IC705 is the optional backpack with a special compartment for your IC705 and room for accessories. The ID52A is a VHF UHF dual bander with D-Star and FM dual mode functions and the first handheld amateur radio with a full color 2.3 inch waterfall display. The radio supports conventional FM as well as D-Star, Simplex, Repeater, Regional and Worldwide calls over the D-Star Internet Gateway. You can even send photos over D-Star with a connected Android device. Other features include a wideband receiver, integrated GPS, micro SD card slot, and IPX7 waterproof. The ID52A is a perfect companion to the IC705. Both use compatible batteries and headsets, and you can use the same Android app for D-Star operation. The IC9700 creates your own band opening. This transceiver brings direct sampling to the UHF-VHF weak signal world. The all-mode transceiver is loaded with innovative features that are sure to keep you busy. Faster processors, higher input gain, higher display resolution, and a cleaner signal. It has the 4.3-inch color touchscreen with live band scope and waterfall, smooth satellite operation with 99 satellite channels, dual watch operation, and full duplex in satellite mode. And finally, the IC7300 is a high-performance HF transceiver with a compact design that will far exceed expectations. This transceiver digitizes RF before various receiver stages, reducing inherent noise in different IF stages. The IC7300 changed the way entry-level HF is designed. It has 15 discrete bandpass filters, the large color touchscreen and spectrum scope, the real HF fun starts here. Visit icomamerica.com slash amateur for more information on ICOM radios for the love of ham radio. We put the ham in ham talk live. And welcome back to Ham Talk Live. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We'll let you know uh, what's happening with the show. And before we get back to John Portune, W6NBC, talking about toroids and balance, it's time for another N9GSU Joke of the Week. Now it's time for the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week, the part of the show where Rick tells us a ham radio joke. The Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week is brought to you by QRM Labs. Now, here's Rick Garrett in 9 GSU with today's Ham Talk Live Joke of the Week. Mountain Dew is my drink of choice when I'm doing parks on the air activations. It gives me that extra shot of energy I need for those long activations. And my wife told me that I was spending far too much time researching Mountain Dew prices, trying to find the cheapest. I told her I was just doing my due diligence. This has been the Ham Talk Live Ham Radio Joke of the Week with Rick Garrett in 9 GSU. Tune in again next week for another joke from Rick. And we're back with John Portune, W6NBC. He is here and to talk a little bit about uh, toroids and balance and all, all this fun stuff. And so we've talked a little bit about uh, what a balance is and what it does. So now, John, how do I know how many how many times to wrap this wire around those things uh, to make the, the kind of antenna that I want? Okay, now that you've picked yourself a toroid, you've picked a 240 or a 140, and you've picked a 43 or you've picked a 31 mix for this for the power and the size of the toroid, you've, you've got the toroid sitting in front of you. You want to know how many turns to put on it, which will choke off the outside shield current, because that's what it is. It's an outside shield current choke. That's its function in life. Uh, balance to unbalance is a meaningless kind of a term to me as far, far as I'm concerned. Yes, it does that. That's real. But that's that's kind of a uh, – that doesn't help you under, 
visualize what the uh, what it does. What I recommend you do, you need to go to coil 32 or coil 64 and get that little calculator. It's available free on the internet and it will it will have embedded in it a a little calculator that Amadon toroids. You've probably heard of Amadon toroids there in they're in Oceanside, California. They sell them. They sell toroids. They're a big seller of toroids. You can buy your toroids from them if you want. They have a wonderful little calculator that does the calculation for you of how many turns to put on, put on your toroid. Uh, you put on your toroid. It lets you put the mix in. It lets you put the size of the toroid. And, and, and then the third thing it needs, it needs the inductance. How many, uh, how many micro Henry's the toroid needs to have on it? And that's just the thing you need to figure out. You need to figure out how many, how many micro Henry's, uh, you need on that toroid. And that's, that's quite easy to figure. There's a fairly simple little, little formula that you can uh, use. I should have written it down here. I don't have it memorized, but, uh, but you need to calculate how many micro Henry's you need to, to, it's one over two pi f times the frequency in in in, in, in duct. That's it. One over two pi f l is the is the formula. Uh, you need to figure out how many micro henrys you need. Uh, it's uh, as I say, the the number of micro henrys is one oh, one divided by two pi times the frequency in 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 hertz. You need to convert if you do if you do it in micro henrys, you can do it in megahertz. And then you get the number of, you get the number of micro Henry's that you need. And that needs to equal 200 ohms AC resistance. That's the amount of ohms you need to make, you need to have to choke off the, uh, the choke off the current. Cause you're in a 50 ohm system. Remember coax is 50 ohms. You need to have at least four times the amount of resistance in the, in, on the ferro, on the, on the toroid. And that needs to be about 200 ohms. You need to get 200 ohms of resistance, AC resistance in, in inductance, in wiring. And that little calculator that, that little calculator that's the, that Amadon provides. And that calculator can be found at coil32.net. Again, that's coil32.net and go to the calculators and there's one there for ferrite. Handier and scat. Then it'll push the button. It'll tell you wind four turns or wind two turns. If you want a good example, if you want to see all of this in writing, uh, look at the look at the AWRL's publication on the air. That's the newbie magazine. You know the newbie magazine that they publish every month, every two months. Mm-hmm. The current issue of the newbie magazine shows you how to do all of this. All of this that I'm talking about here today, including describing what a ballon does and so forth, the Newbie magazine has a, an article that I just wrote showing you how to do that uh, show, and showing you how to get that calculator and where it is and all of that stuff. It's all in this all in this current issue of On the Air magazine, which you can get a copy of just by going to the ARRL, if you're a member, and reading this month's issue of the magazine on a FT-140 uh, toroid. All right, so we we go and get the calculator, and we, we put in our frequency, and we figure out how many how many turns that we need to to wrap this wire around it, and that, and and then where do we go from there? Well, uh, then you stall the ball and uh, wherever your coax ends. <laughs> yep. Okay. So it's time to time to put up the antenna. So and. and you know, again, we've got different ones for HF and VHF because you've got a, a big f- gap in in frequency coverage there. Yeah, well, you need a different mix for the different frequencies, and you need a different number of turns because the doesn't need as many turns at VHF as it does it does it does it at HF. And if you're building it for lower frequency HF, you need more turns and so forth. But the little calculator lets you take care of that. Okay, very good. So, yeah, make sure you check out On the Air. That's, uh, let's see, we're recording this on January 29th of 2023. Do you know if that's the 
Uh, it's it's the current one, which I think is. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, that is the January and February 2023 issue of On the Air magazine, which is indeed the current issue on org right now. Well, John, anything else uh, we, we should know about toroids today? Oh, yes, I might mention that uh, if you're making a, a, a one-to-one or a four-to-one or a, or a nine-to-one, balance for let's say an end fed end fed long wire the same principles apply you only need to concern yourself though with the with the smaller winding the smaller winding that's the only one that needs to the, the calculator only needs to be used on the smaller winding because if you put on let's say two turns on a nine to one and 18 turns on the on the other side you know uh, for the uh, for the for the nine the nine side of the the nine to one or a balance. You only need to concern yourself with the the the, the, the side that connects to the coax because that's where you need the choking is on the coax. You don't need the choking on the antenna side. You need the choking on the on the coax side of the uh, of the balance. A one to one is the same on both sides. Uh, another point I might make about winding winding ferrite balance is the use of zip cord common zip cord is great stuff for for winding for winding balance because it it lets you wind the double winding that you always wind on a toroid one for the input one for the output uh cuz cuz uh, cuz zip cord is is pretty much 50 ohm transmission line it's very close to 50 ohm transmission line it's amazing take your common extension cord and cut a piece and that's what i used in the current article in on the air magazine was just a piece of common extension cord and the little calculator said wind four turns of it so i wound four turns of common zip cord hooked one end up to an so239 the other end to a couple of uh, eye bolts and we had a balance <laughs> Yeah, that's a, that's a neat thing and always helps when you can just use some stuff laying around the house or, uh, pick yeah. up at the restore or something like that. Uh, you know, you don't have to, to have all the fancy stuff. Well, the newbies like that kind of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but us uh, hams, we, we, we like cheap too. We, we do tend yeah. to like cheap stuff. <laughs> Well, John, thank you so much for uh, for being with us here uh, to talk about some uh, toroids and and balance and and so for people getting uh, the urge to to build an antenna to to get out there. Um, I know I've got uh, this infed up now. At least I have something out there. That's not that's not my. Uh, my, my I like preferred it. antenna, but as as you are are well a, an expert at uh, as well, uh, the the HOA police uh, <laughs> haven't oh, found no. it yet. So <laughs> I, 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 I fight them all the time. By the way, I like I like Enfed half waves. I think they're great antennas. They have the u- unique quality of of with a nice uh, nine to one or forty nine to one balance and. Some people get confused about why they call it a nine to one or a forty nine to one. Nine to one is the turns ratio. Forty nine to one is the impedance ratio of the same balance. But uh, for the nice forty nine or nine to one balance at the end of an end fed uh, uh, half wave antenna, it not only works at that at the lowest frequency, it works at the harmonics too. That's what I like about the end fed half wave. Great yeah. antenna. I, I, you know, I've been kind of happy with it. That- for for some things it, it's not helping with these uh de expeditions on on antarctica and things like that but uh oh it's a, it's it, a but it gets the job done it's a compromise antenna no question yeah. about oh yeah it. it's it's easy and cheap you know but it works pretty well, <laughs> it works pretty well for a piece of wire <laughs> yeah it, it works well for 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 uh the one criteria which is nobody can see it so yeah and but, <laughs> Get yourself a piece of twenty-six gauge Davis uh, Davis Stealth Flex, and it's barely visible. <laughs> yeah, that, that's another good piece of an, another good tip. Um, and most of the ham dealers sell Davis Stealth Flex. It's a a, a very it's made of 
very, very fine wire, and it's copper-clad steel wire, so it doesn't stretch. It doesn't stretch in many, many fine, many, many fine strands. And um, and then it's covered in a very, very tough polyethylene jacket. So I've had, and they make it in, in I think, 26-gauge, 13-gauge or 14-gauge, and then I think 11 gauge or 12 gauge. It's it's moderately it, it has a moderate moderate price tag on it, but it's excellent for putting up wire antennas. I've had a loop of 26 of their 20 26 gauge wire around my house for a long time. That stuff has been up there for for ages. It never stretches. Great wire. Good for good. invisible antennas. Yeah, well, that's that's the name of the game right now. So, till I can uh, remedy that, so <laughs> so it, it it's at least got me on the air. I, I'll say that twenty meters, yeah, not so much, but but it, it's at least got me on the air. So, well, John, thanks again for being here and educating us on uh, on this stuff, and uh, we'll we'll talk to you soon. And again, watch for for articles. Um, from John in uh, in QST and on the air, so a uh, good place to find some some good projects to do. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. My pleasure, and all the best. That is a wrap for this edition of Ham Talk Live. I'd like to thank my guest, John Portoon, W6NBC, and everybody out there in cyberspace for listening. I invite you back next time. And coming up, we will be coming to you uh, live uh, from the Orlando Hamcation here in a couple of weeks. So uh, make sure you tune in for that. Uh, we we may have may have be on the air one more time before then, but we'll. Uh, definitely be on from Orlando, so uh, make sure you you catch that. Uh, for a list of all of our upcoming guests, go to hamtalklive.com. So for now, this is Neil Rapp, WB9VPG, saying 7375, and may the good DX be yours. For 73, to you and your family, I'll be seeing you further down the log. Your 73. To you and your family, I'll be seeing you further down the log. It's hard to believe that you're into the deed, cause you sound just like a local up here. But why don't those whistling Mediterraneans check if your frequency's clear?